my name is Trias. I'm from Universitas Erlangga as well as affiliate researcher in Siame Orec Fund. Uh, today I'm going to share about my research actually. It's related to a nutrition education that we want to improve uh, the consumption of fish among elementary school children. And one of the sessions that we have is using uh, comic storytelling, what we call as tendangan super lele. In uh, English, tendangan super lele is basically mean the, what do you call, like a catfish super kick or something like that. So it's related to uh, soccer, which are uh, in Indonesia, we're crazy about it. Okay. As a background, why we want to do this? Because as we see in the recent data from the Indonesian, uh, Indonesia Family Life Survey as well as the Indonesian Statistics uh, Bureau, the prevalence of anemia among school age children from 9 to 15 years are still quite high. It's around like 20.6% uh, in 2007 and 2008. And in the district of uh, Subra, Surabaya itself, which is my uh, hometown, is 13.2. So it's a major problem in Indonesia. And some studies show yeah, yeah. in Indonesia. association between animal protein uh, with anemia where the children eat two to three times per week of animal protein are more prone to anemia compared to those who eat more frequent which are four to six weeks and the odds ratio is like five times higher so if they eat less the uh, risk of developing anemia is also greater. This also true in the Brazilian uh, study where the consumption of animal protein of less than 28.8 uh, grams per day were more at risk of anemia compared to those who ate more than 44.6 uh, grams per day. Hence, we want to do this uh, research related to uh, behavioral change that we want to improve the consumption of uh, fish and in our case we use catfish why because catfish is easier to find easier to raise in indonesia and any uh, southeast asian nation and we want to address that the use of behavioral change is rarely implemented in terms of nutrition education then that was one of the weaknesses of government program when it comes to um improving the behavior uh, good health behavior among uh, elementary school children so in this study we use a theory of planned behavior some of you might know this theory by uh, eisen that in order to make the healthy behavior someone has to get an intention so if we what behavior that we want we want the children to eat more and more uh, fish because it shows that it's high in uh, protein as well as iron relatively compared to those we are uh, plant-based uh, food to have this behavior someone needs to have intention to eat the uh, fish or any other uh, animal food but intention alone is not enough that's why in this uh, uh, theory we also uh, use what we call perceived behavior control perceived behavior control is a belief that somebody can control their own behavior regardless some obstacles or barriers that pose them to implement the behavior for example if you want to eat fish you might have uh, barriers that, oh, it's in uh, later or the month that your incomes already diminish. If you have a higher perceived behavioral control, even though you are in the beginning of the month, you just get the money or it's at the end of the month, it doesn't matter. Uh, your perceived behavioral control that you can buy the fish and eat or give it to your family or your children, then it's still going to be high. And other variables that relate to 
uh, this theory is subjective norm. Subjective norm is a norm that was built upon between you yourself, the person who conduct the behavior, with others who are um, uh, regardless as close to them. Close means that their opinion are valued. It could be somebody who are authoritative. For example, you have your personal doctors or your teachers who told you to do something, then you believe because you think that they have authority to tell you what to do. But that's not only the case because subjective norm can also build by the peers. And that's why our uh, session today about the using uh, comic book, we want to build the peer group uh, influence among the elementary school children themselves that eating uh, fish is beneficial for their health. And then the last one is attitude. So we want also uh, build uh, attitude that in the children's mind, eating fish is good for their health. It's not as smelly as what they think or they believe. And we, we want to have a hands-on experience whether what they believe is true or is false. And when it's false and we show that it's false, it could be uh, taken them for the rest of their lives. So in my study, we make uh, what we call a race bed pool. This is like, uh, we just like uh, clear the ground and then we make uh, this pool here and we raise catfish. This is in a school setting. So um, our nutrition and education consists of uh, six session that is spanning from uh, uh, zero to three months length, nutrition education. And one of which is uh, building the ponds. So we want to have the children a constant reminder that uh, we want them to uh, take care of the fawn and then feed the fish and play with the fish, something like that, to improve their belongingness and to improve their, what do you call, um, uh, attitude that fish is not as smelly as they think. And then uh, that uh, was the my fish pond uh, method that we use. And then second one, we also use a jingle. Uh, we develop a kind of a song really like uh, uh, suka makan ikan or like to eat fish uh, in Indonesia. And we did this to the school children as well. So it uh, will improve the subjective norm that's what we believe because uh, children like to hear repetitive, thing, repetitive things and having a song dedicated to eating fish is also involved in that. And then the third one is anemia and performance. This one, what we do is using the storytelling that I'm going to talk about with you. Uh, we call it tendangan super lele or uh, super uh, catfish uh, kick. And then we also have a session about involving parents in terms of preparing uh, fish into the children's um, uh, diet. So we we teach the student at school, but then at home we want the parent to be able to support with providing them with the fish. So what we do, we give uh, the fish to the kids at school and then we ask them uh, to tell the parent that uh, it is beneficial and we give also a booklet about how to prepare a catfish to the parents and they uh, would likely to uh, prepare the meal involving fish in it. And uh, this is the other session that we have. And then at school itself, we also have a game of uh, making a fish bento. It's again, because our study is related to catfish, the, uh, the fish is not only this, it's in the picture, but uh, we actually have a catfish. And we have a competition among uh, students who make the best one get a reward or something. And then the last part of our intervention for the study is a yummy fish. So when we raise the catfish for three months, we uh, get the catfish which are ready 
for three months to be harvested. So uh, for three months, they take care of the fish, they feed the fish, and then after three months, they will um, what do you call uh, harvest the fish, and we have a cook out about uh, the fish itself. So it's kind of a loop that uh, they see how the fish growing, and then they. Yeah. Yeah. The tendangan super lele, the storytelling itself. Stories are a powerful means of language teaching. A skillful teacher can use stories to develop more efficient learning, more fluent speaking, and the ability to read and write easily and competently. Children usually enjoy hearing the same stories many times. Maybe uh, in your country, you also have uh, Dora the Explorer, the uh, series. If you notice, what happened with Dora is always repetitive. Like after you have, if you want to, for example, she wants to go to a mountain, but she has to go through a gate and then to the forest and then to the river, something like that. And then it was developed once and then repeated another and another. And that's uh, make the children easier to understand compared if we don't repeat it. Uh, we can tell the story using a picture book or a flannel board, uh, movable characters. <coughs> Sorry. Um, what we did in our session, we use uh, a kind of puzzle. Um, what part of the uh, fish and other animal and which one is uh, more beneficial to them and which one they like and which one they don't like is something that uh, the children can easily understand. We can also tell and read the story while children move. Uh, if we have a puppets or something aware of mice uh, acting like a fish or something, that's also something that can be done. But in our case, we don't do this because uh, in it uh, prepare more of the a uh, doll, maybe a doll with a catfish will do as well. And then this is what we do. We tell a story and the children can uh, draw in it. We actually, it's not drawing that what we do is like, uh, well, what do you call, uh, making uh, coloring. So we have a catfish and then make it a coloring and uh, uh, the children with the most beautiful coloring uh, have a reward for that. And we can also tell a version of a familiar story with different authors and illustrators just for comparison. For example, if we uh, uh, see in a Western uh, context, we have a hare and uh, rabbits. In Indonesia, we have like, uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, we call it kancil, uh, uh, yeah. a deer that have a race with uh, a snail or something like that. So it's kind of similar story with the similar uh, take home message that can be brought up uh, into the storytelling technique. And the children may listen to the tape recorded story together or individually using earphone. And what we did in our uh, intervention with the storytelling was like, we have one nutrition educators that are sitting in the front or uh, in a circle of a 10 uh, elementary school children and they literally uh, read the uh, comics book that we have tendangan super lele and then we want them to uh, retell the story so the children have to listen to the story that we give and then retell the story and sometimes we want them to acting as like uh, the person who are in the story just to like uh, make a depth understanding and easier to remember about the uh, message that we want to clarify. Donna Brighton, a uh, famous uh, uh, writer said, story act activities can also be games. So we can use, for example, um, a game which are involving the storyline like make them into a role play that you are the one that is 
doing a bad behavior and the other one have a good behavior. So we can uh, play around with things like that. Uh, right in 1995 stated that provide activities to use before, during and after a story, as well as stories and lesson plan for children and different age. So this is it's always a good thing that in Please, every uh, storytelling we can use like for example a hello, hello Mr. Um, can you hear me something I, yes i think there was a connection problem just now uh could you maybe repeat uh from um storyline uh i think uh the participants couldn't hear you okay yeah sorry for the interruption from this from uh, from uh hello Yes, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hello. Uh, Hello, Tan. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello? Uh, yes, hello. Okay. Uh, can yeah, you hear me? there was uh, some kind of connection problem just now. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think we were uh, continuing from um, the, the person you were talking about. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to uh, rewind because we have a, a connection problem just now. So um, in one of our nutrition education, we use storytelling technique using comics book. And the, uh, the comics book is the Tendangan Super Lele or the, uh, the uh, Super Catfish Kick or something like that. So uh, why we use stories? Because they are powerful means or tool that uh, can be efficient, efficient on listening. On listening. And then, and then speaking, speaking in ability, in ability to read and write, write, and write for easily for and competently. If we recall in several uh, children TV shows, for example, the Dora, Dora the Explorer, they usually uh, have uh, what you call repetitive in terms of storytelling. For example, the Dora wants to go to the mountain, he has to go through a gate and then go to the forest and then go to the river. And then once they clear one of the obstacle, uh, the narrative is going to be coming back again. Where we go, we already go to the gate. And then where we go next and then something like that. So repetitive is always uh, a good strategy when it comes to children. And we can also use uh, storytelling using a picture book or a flannel board or movable characters. In our case, for our nutrition education, we use uh, this uh, Tendangan Super Lele book uh, using the uh, comic characters. We will have it uh, uh, on the slide later on that you can read. Why? Because we think that it's uh, something that the children will draw upon. They can relate that, oh, they are part of the uh, characters that might be uh, narrated in the book. We can uh, read uh, the story using uh, puppets or dolls. So for example, the storyteller wear a mask about a catfish. That might be a good strategy as well, just to embolden our message that catfish is beneficial for their health. And then we can tell a story if the children is like under age, maybe a uh, first grader elementary school, they might want to draw something because some kids it's not easy to stand still. They need something to do with their hands. Uh, what we did in our intervention is not drawing, but it's coloring. So we give them um, a print of a catfish with uh, have a crayon on it, and so they can <coughs> they can uh, color the catfish itself. Um, we can also tell a different version of the familiar story. For example, if in a Western country we know that there is a story about being a persistent and doing things that needs to be uh, what you call consistent on your effort, 
uh, like a story about rabbit and the hare. In uh, our context, like in Indonesia, we have a story that is the similar race between uh, a deer and a snail, or in a different country might be related to a fox and a turtle, something like that. So it's bring, <coughs> excuse me, it bring the same uh, message, but with the different characters that closer to the, our audience. So that's why we use uh, catfish because catfish is uh, uh, easily found in Indonesia. Uh, I think in Southeast Asia, we uh, eat catfish, maybe different time, but it's still available there. So we also can make a tape recorded of the story first and then make them listen to the tape recorder or using uh, individually using headphones. And if possible, we can also use a follow-up activities like uh, make them retell the story and find what are uh, funny about the story and how they relate to the stories or make them acting about the story. And it's something that uh, the children might be enjoying. And if they enjoy the storytelling that we do, then it will uh, stay in their mind longer compared to if we didn't do that. Some of the scholars say that story activities can also be games. In our uh, session with the comic books, we also make a game uh, using like a puzzle of uh, several kind of uh, animal protein, which uh, we want them to find which one is the catfish. And it's also good idea if you want to use a before, during and after story uh, activities just to engage the children more and more. It could be something that they need to write or something that they can, um, uh, what do you call, ask after the storytelling is over. Um, another strategy we can also use a chain when uh, evaluating whether the story that we tell is uh, uh, understood by the children. For example, we ask several children, we give them a role and then uh, move around whether they will find a, a similar message from the story or not. Because again, it's really related to uh, communication, effective communication strategy, but it's always good if we ask them uh, whether the uh, take home message from one student to another are the same or not. It could be given orally or in writing. Uh, gesture and movement is always good. Like, for example, if you want to say about a lion, it's going to be raw, like, wow, or maybe you want to have, like, uh, with the mouse or something like that. It's it's always like, uh, uh, from the children's point of view, uh, to make them uh, more engaged in our storytelling. And we, we can also combine gesture movement with songs, poems, chants, drama. And in our case, we use a uh, jingle or songs about eating fish that are tied with the different session that we have. So uh, these are the comics book that we made. We call it Tendangan Super Lele or uh, Catfish Super Kick. The central character is uh, element, elementary school children, four grader named Bima and the other one is Akbar. Bima, uh, both of them love, love to play soccer, but um, uh, Bima have a little bit malnourished because he doesn't like to eat um, nutritious food, only eat rice and then some of the unhealthy stuff, but Akbar have a balanced diet. And uh, Bu Ambar is, uh, the mother of Akbar, a housewife, and he, uh, she is cook for Akbar, so she has more time to take care of Akbar meals every day, 
as compared to Buratna, who are the mother of Bhima. Uh, Buratna, uh, Miss Rat Mrs. Ratna is a, a, we call a working woman which have less time to prepare food for Bhima. But then uh, because they are more wealthy family, they have a nanny, Badini, this one is the nanny. And, um, oh, sorry. Um, and Pak Bowo is the uh, sports teacher. Ayah Akbar is the father of Akbar. And we have a team Super Lele. It's a five uh, person which are competing for the championship. And we also have a uh, university student. This is actually my uh, student who are conducting the nutrition education in the community. So here goes the story. It's like, Kukuruyuk! It is 5.30 in the morning. It's time for Bima and Akbar to get ready to school. Good morning, my boy. Let's have a breakfast. Father's waiting. Yay, dad is home. Look what I've cooked for you, dad. And dad, Akbar's favorite crispy fried fish, sauté veggies, fried tofu, and tempeh, Fish with sweet sour sauce. Last but not least, make special for you, Abba. Wow, this looks so delicious, man. Let's eat. Let's have a breakfast. And then they eat the breakfast. Take care, Abba. Mom, dad, bye. As usual, uh, Bima, uh, Abba had to Bima's house first because they're good buddies. Thank you for breakfast, helps me feel energized. At the Bima house, her mom is already uh, ready to go to work and then told Bima, um, you should eat your breakfast because I already cooked for you and you can ask the nanny what, what to eat. What's for breakfast, mom? Fried fish and sausage, Bima. Your mom cook it. Uh, I'm too lazy to eat. I don't like fish either. Yeah. Uh, Bima doesn't like uh, cat fish. But hey, your mom already cooked it for you. I'm afraid I'm late. Bye. And then it's like whoosh. without eating breakfast. This is another problem in nutrition for elementary school where they don't eat. Hey Bima, first day of school. Hi Bar, let's go to school together. Birma and Akbar go to school together. And then that morning they have a lesson from uh, the teacher and there's another announcement from the sports teacher. Uh, what's announcement? Three days from now, there will be a soccer match between classes. You may choose five people as representative. They'll be present to win a match. Yay! They're all excited to have a soccer match between uh, the classes. Okay, kids, let's continue our class. And then it's about math. Boo! Some other student doesn't like math, but some are. And who can answer this? Oh, I can, says uh, Akbar. Akbar can answer is good because I like fish. So it fish, ma'am. My mom said fish is good brain development. Whoa, Akbar is so smart because of he ate fish. That's what the children is asking. Good job, Akbar. You answered it correctly. Thank you, ma'am. Wow, you so smart, Akbar. Is that because of fish? And this is the part that in our uh, nutrition education, kind of said through Akbar that fish is high in nutrient, fish has omega-3 to improve memory and there's more benefit from eating fish. It's also contain DHA to improve food, uh, to improve focus and eyesight. Ew, why fish? Fish is disgusting, smelly. Fish is not tasty. Yeah, said Bima. You're just not getting used to it, fish, Bim. Just try it and you're gonna love it. 
Okay, children, and they have a break, and during the break, they play soccer. They play to have kind of selection to represent the classes. They have two teams that goes which not uh, go against one another. Let's go, Bima. I will stop you, Akbar. Yeah, yeah, ha, you feel Bona. Oh, they are good, says the teacher, silently observing. So who's going to be the class representative? Pass me the ball, Bar. Take this beam. Bima and Akbar are really good at collaborating, and Akbar is a goal scorer. And go! Bima have a, a, a very sharp and strong kick that make the goal for the team. But then the other team, let's let's uh, try to beat this. We can also attack them. And then uh, later on, when all of the friend is still energized, Bima is feeling uh, tired. Oh, why my leg feels so heavy? And then, but Bima collapse. And then the teacher bring him to the uh, school. Uh, uh, what do you call it? We call it UKS. It was like a school, uh, like a school, um, what do you call uh, a school healthcare that is usually available in every school. It's just like a bed with some uh, 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 first aid medication. And then after uh, Bima is wake up from his Painted, uh, Akbar is asking, um, why I'm still fainted? Maybe because you're not having breakfast. Drink this tea first. I will cure your wound. This morning I skipped breakfast, mom. And that's why you skip breakfast. My mom cook fish, but I don't like fish. It's disgusting and have lots of bones. And then the cheat. The teacher explained the benefit of fish. That fish contain vitamin D, have high protein and omega-3 acid, and etc. So this is the repetition that uh, Akbar already said before. So this is strategy that we use when we do the storytelling as well. And then, okay, you just take a rest and we send uh, the ambulance to uh, take you home. And then there comes the announcement, the class representative for the Super Lele Kick. And Akbar, Bima, Jody, Bona, and Hendra, the representative of the fourth grade classes. After the announcement, uh, the class have a university student from Universitas Erlangga who going to tell the benefit of fish. And who knows the advantage of eating fish? Uh, what is it? And then the university student said that fish is good because it's content high nutrient, help brain development, help focus, prevent anemia, uh, fast and wound healing. Fish is nutritious food. For example, catfish. And we have this uh, catfish uh, nutrient content. So again, this is the third time when we uh what do you call delivered the message or the uh, knowledge about the nutrition content and the benefit of catfish eating it can improve concentration and focus while studying also contain amino acids omega-6 epa and dha and also have prevent anemia which are the cause when um, bima is fainting and the suggestion from the university student is don't forget to eat balanced diet. What's that? Do you know what's balanced diet? Uh, I don't know. And then we also introduce what's our balanced diet. The on one plate, there are staple food such as rice, animals, plant based side dishes, and vegetables. And don't forget to drink. In Indonesia, we have suggestion that the, uh, the drink is water, but in different country, like in the US, they use it uh, milk. So it's okay. But then um, here come the day of the competition. They, uh, the fourth grader, 
Pima and Akbar team is go against the higher fifth grader student. And the fifth grader student have score first, but then Akbar to uh, Bima don't lose hope. Let's go with our strategy in breakfast. They have a strategy of a catfish like strategy. What is that? It's just move forward and a quick pass like a catfish that are sleep, slippery and uh, go fast in the water. And then when um, Akbar have got the ball, he kick it on the corner like a, a super catfish kick and it's go. Cool. Yeah. And then they also have one more kicks and it, it turned it. Uh, now is the time for uh, Akbar to have a bicycle kick that make them win 2-1. So that's that's basically the uh, comics that we do. And when we did it, um, one nutrition educator or the teacher can talk through to the stories with around 10, 10 students. And then we can uh, ask questions about whether it's good or not. So what do you think of the comics? Do you think the children will like it? Do you think you can improve knowledge, attitude, and practice in children to eat fish? This is the part where this is my notation educators, the university student, and this is the children that we want them to retell the story that we have about uh, Tendangan Super Lele. And for the evaluation of knowledge, we also use uh, cardboard here, this is related to anemia and our results, I cannot give you the uh, details yet because I still want to publish the results and there's a significant change in attitude and knowledge related to fish consumption as well as the behavior. The number of fish consumed is significantly increased in a group that have nutrition education. But remember in our uh, theory that we have only uh, one variable which are not significantly improved, which are um, subjective norm. Because to make the norm uh, in a peer group, I think it takes more time and could be because our interventions only lasted for three months. It could be if we uh, have a longer session, it could be improved, but not in our case now. So um, that's all for my lecture. I open up for question and answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Trias. That was a very interesting comic and a, a very nice presentation. Uh, I think I um, personally, I really like the comic and the approach to um, getting kids to to like uh, eating fish. Oh, thank you. Uh, but b before um, we answer questions from the participants, as we wait for them to type down the questions, I'd like to ask uh, some questions myself. OK. Um, so just just before that, uh, I'll let every participant know that they can type down in the chat box to ask questions, and then I'll read them out loud to Dr. Trias and he will uh, answer your questions for you. Okay, uh, so before um, the the comic, you, you showed us uh, a few methods, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, nutri nutrition education, uh, nutri nutritionists uh, get students, how, how they get students to um, to be motivated to eat fish. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just curious about the, the my fish pond approach. Uh-huh. So that one, is it like uh, the, the students um, get involved in, in racing the, the, the fish or, or how, is yeah. it, how does it work? Yeah, so that's uh, basically uh, through the um, a theory of plant behavior to improve their self-efficacy and to improve their attitude related to catfish because we have like a stigma that catfish is smelly and it's like uh, right, snake right. light or something like that. So we want to have the children uh, constant access to the uh, fish pond. So we actually built that fish pond 
in the yard of the school. If you ever know about uh, uh, what do you call it? school gardening, it's uh -huh. the same idea, but with a pool, not with the garden. Right. So with, with the gardening, we, we want to improve uh, 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 vegetables and fruit consumption, but with this one, we want to improve the fish. The idea is that, yes, we did involve them to feed the fish and to clean uh, if the pond have like uh, leaves falling down, we want to uh, make them big enough with using like a stick or something like that that we provide. But not only the kid who um, taking care of the pond, we also hire the uh, what do you call school gardener. So the heavy work was done by the school uh, gardener, but then every day the kid going to the pond and feed the fish. All so right. they, they will have like uh, close uh, togetherness with the fish itself. So that's the right. idea. But then after that experience with the pond, because it's in the school, and then we have nutrition education in class. And then right. we also have the, the parents at home that will enable to cook the fish itself. So that's the idea, yeah. I see, and I'm curious uh, if it causes any kind of attachment, uh, as in for, for oh, the kids to, you know, like, and they then they would have because to they to laugh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's um, actually the one one of the question that was uh, raised as well when I have a proposal for this uh, uh, intervention, but then when we evaluate, it's not because cat's fish is really a. Uh, uh, highly, uh, what do you call, widely available in the community. And the children also saw that many people are selling catfish and they eat it. Right, right. So, uh, fortunately, there's no like a deep attachment that make them <laughs> want to eat it. So like the right. of what we want. So yeah. I see. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I uh, the next question is, uh, how, how do you get a hold of the, the comic? Is it possible for us to, to purchase the comic somewhere? Well, uh, because this study is funded by the Xiaomi Orec uh, uh -huh. they, they, they maybe you can uh, ask them to assess it. Or if you want, uh, you can maybe, uh, if any of the participants wants and can email me and uh, I can, uh, um, I don't know, maybe send it to you guys, but it's going to okay. cost the, uh, what do you call it, the, the shipping fees or something? I, I don't know. Right, but so uh, maybe what we can do is um, the participants can uh, send an email to CMU Secretariat, uh -huh. um, the same email that was, um, that sent the information to you all, mm -hmm. and then um, just, just let us know that uh, if you want the comic, just send us an email and then we'll contact Mr. Prius um, oh. for the comic. Uh, so, so there's that. Uh, okay, any more questions uh, to Dr. Trias regarding the, the comic or uh, anything uh, before that? Okay, maybe we can wait uh, about five more minutes, and okay. then I'll. Um, it's I'll just make like a comment, uh, not already a question, but um, I it's it's very interesting because I I never actually noticed that in cartoons that they repeat things, um, yeah. for you know for the purpose of having the kids uh, learn, mm -hmm. uh, but but then when you mention it, then when I think back, uh, and then. It, like think about cartoons, they they do that, and yes. uh, it, it's something that's not really realized, uh, I think, unless you 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 really uh, have assessed it. Yeah. So so that's that's very interesting. That's yeah. Yeah, I think that's a a good point where you didn't realize it. I think yeah. that's 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 the the big uh, plus point from the makers is that the audience doesn't realize that it's being repeated and it was stuck in their minds, right? It, yeah. And if, if you notice as a lay person that it was repeated again and again without 
uh, uh, it could be bothersome for someone, then that's right. right uh, the yeah. placement of the repetitiveness might not be appropriate. So mm -hmm. we need to think strategically like when. So it also has to be embodied in the storytelling itself. For example, like uh, we have the uh, Akbar first telling what his knowledge about the fish and then the teachers and then the university. So it's kind of like uh, taught by different person that it's going to improve the acceptance from the kids. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we cannot put uh, the parents itself that uh, what you call wants to uh, give the what you call kind of science behind the fish, but they do encourage the children to uh, eat the fish. So when when many people encourage them, it make them more. Uh, engage to the behavior itself yeah yeah um that's yeah and and uh another thing is um it's it's not just beneficial uh for for just nutrition nutrition education right but oh, it's yeah. also for for any kind of education that it's, yeah it's sort I, of like a new way for teachers to uh, reevaluate how they would like to, you know, um, teach, right? Students yep. to, yep. to not make it boring because in classrooms, sometimes when you keep on repeating the same information over and over again, it can get a little bit boring for the students. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, approach teaching with a different kind of method like this, then I think it, it could be something creative and something fun for the students. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, what do you call a specific to nutrition, but it could be with any others. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, I, I got a question, um, but I, I'm not sure uh, regarding the the actual specific definition of uh, of this Tadi question. Um, so, uh, the question is, how is the cultural effect um, from from this comic? Uh, if Mr. Umka, who asked this question, could mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe clarify the question a little bit, uh, we can we can get the answer to you. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the how is the cultural effect so far? How is the cultural the, the cultural effect? So. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the question is not uh, not so clear currently, uh, but I'm um, I'm just asking um, Mr. <laughs> the person who asked the question. There is time. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm, is it a cultural uh, effect uh -huh, of the, the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, the cartoon. Yeah, well, in 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 relation to making the cartoon itself, we in a development stage, we also consider the a culture aspect of the fish eating uh, behavior in a community. So why we use catfish? Not only that it's easy to raise, but it's also culturally appropriate and acceptable by the community. So that's something to consider. So oh, right. I, I agree that, uh, for example, if we like uh, raising, for example, salmon or something that is like not widely available and maybe they have some kind of a stigma about all oh, this uh, fish, but they have a red kind of color content in the meat or something, it could be culturally inappropriate. So yes, we have to uh, consider uh, the availability, the cultural, um, acceptance related to our stories. If the stories is like against the culture, it would likely to have rejection. I agree with you. So mm -hmm. in the development phase, we have, we need to think about this. So we want to just like uh, move from the existing cultures and make it more uh, beneficial to our message. And our message is uh, actually not only catfish, but fish in general because right. 
uh, Indonesia as archipelagos, and we have lots of fish, not only catfish, but yeah. So, and I think it's uh, catfish uh, is a very relevant um, uh, example of you know this because uh, it's widely available in Southeast Asian countries. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very relevant to the context of our region. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think uh, there are no more questions. Uh, so, um, Dr. Trius, uh, would you yeah. like to maybe give uh, a short uh, uh, closing or any remarks? Okay, thank you very much, Stan, and everybody, really. Uh, it's an honor for me to share my work, my experience in uh, nutrition education. And using comics book, I think, is one of the only one of the strategy that need to be addressed in teaching, especially elementary school children. Why? Because they start learning about reading and writing, and it could be a good strategy for them as well, because it gives them a visual, not only uh, letters, and it was made in a cultural or appropriate way that engage them to the message that we want. So I urge you in your own capacity, in your own culture, you can develop uh, storytelling techniques and using comics book is one way to do it, not have to be a comic book, but why comic book? Because it's something that the children love and why we, uh, we want to use something that they love to make the behavior of change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Trias. Uh, it's been a very uh, interesting and uh, very fun, I think, um, presentation thank for for all of us. And uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for your time um, spent preparing the presentation and also uh, giving uh, the presentation today. Uh, I'd also like to thank Simo Reckman for contributing to the program. It's it's a pleasure always uh, working with. Uh, Ms. Noor and um, the, the team of Simeo Rexman. Um, it's once again, it's a collaboration between uh, Simeo Secretariat and Simeo Rexman, uh, the Regional Center for Nutrition um, Education. And uh, thank everyone as well, uh, all participants for joining today. And if you have any questions, you can email us. Um, and uh, if you would like to have the, the, the comic, uh, just just email us and then I will personally email Dr. Trias uh, to ask uh, for, for the comic to be sent to you. Um, so thank you very much and uh, have a great week.